Hello, and welcome to our beginner series with Vray for Houdini, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a camera in your scene and adjust its settings in order to help you understand how the Vray camera works. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description, so you can play with the scene in your own time. Now let's get started. We do not have a camera in the scene yet. To make a new camera, Click on this drop down in the viewport where it says no cam and then select new camera. This creates a standard Houdini camera. I will rename it in order to keep things more organized. Next, we can open the V-Ray frame buffer using the shelf button and start IPR rendering. Because we have not specified the camera to be used for rendering, V-Ray will make a default one at the origin. We can select the camera that we just made by holding the left mouse button over the start IPR icon. If we want to adjust the camera position, we need to lock it first. We can do that by clicking on this lock icon. As you can see, V-Ray will update the new camera position as soon as we're done moving it. To make V-Ray update the camera position in real time, we need to enable export view continuously. Let's begin adjusting some of the camera settings. With the camera node selected, go to the View tab and adjust the focal length to make the shot more narrow. This will also help us get a nice depth of field later. When I'm done adjusting the camera position, I can lock it to prevent accidental camera movement. The next step is to turn this standard Houdini camera into a V-Ray physical camera. Select the camera and click on the physical camera button located in the V-Ray shelf. This adds V-Ray properties to the camera that we can start adjusting next. There are four tabs that contain different sets of settings. The main tab groups settings for exposure, white balance, lens shift, and so on. The next three tabs are pretty self-explanatory and contain settings related to their name. We're going to focus on the main tab first. Adjusting the exposure is one of the main uses of the V-Ray physical camera. The camera is designed to work just like a real camera, which makes the adjustment of the exposure intuitive and familiar to users that have experience with photography. Modern cameras have settings for auto exposure and white balance, which makes them easy to use even by beginners. V-Ray follows this example and also have auto settings. To enable them, go to the Out context, select the V-Ray ROP, and click on the Render tab. Then, under Camera, enable the Auto Exposure. We will need to restart the render for the changes to take effect. To transfer the correction to the camera, stop the render, disable Auto Exposure, and go back to the camera settings. Then, use the Transfer ROP Auto Corrections button to transfer the settings that V-Ray calculated to the camera itself. This adjusts the ISO value. If you need more control, you can further adjust the exposure by adjusting the F number, shutter speed, and ISO values. The ISO controls how sensitive the camera is to light. Higher values make the camera more sensitive. The shutter speed controls how long the shutter stays open. Lower values make the shutter stay open longer, which makes the image brighter. If you have motion blur enabled, the effect will become stronger as well. The F number controls how open the aperture is. Lower values open the aperture more and let more light in, which makes the image brighter. It also controls how defocused the render gets when the depth of field effect is enabled. The physical exposure mode is great if you want to mimic how a real camera works. However, there's another and arguably easier method that you can use. Click on the exposure dropdown and select exposure value. The exposure value parameter is now active and you can use that slider to adjust how bright the image is. Moving the slider to the left will make the image brighter. This method allows us to adjust the exposure separately from the F number and shutter speed. This means that those parameters will no longer affect the exposure. This makes it easy to use them to adjust the depth of field and motion blur without affecting the brightness of the image. Next, I will enable the vignetting effect. This darkens the corners of the image, which is an artifact that is sometimes present in real-world photography. 
Increasing this value makes the effect stronger. The next step in this setup is to enable the depth of field effect. This is an effect that is always present in photography and is often used to focus the eye to the point of interest. In this case, I want the background to be out of focus. Go to the Depth of Field tab and click on Enable. This adjustment is updated in the frame buffer without the need to restart the render. To make the background out of focus instead of the camera asset, adjust the focus distance parameter. We can see where the focus point is in the viewport. The background is now defocused. We can lower the F number to make the effect stronger. Next, we can use the depth of field settings to change the appearance of the bouquet. Using a render region around one of those bouquet will help us speed up the refresh time while we adjust the settings. Go back to the depth of field settings and enable bouquet. Here we can adjust the number of blades that the aperture has. We can rotate the blades using the slider. We can also adjust the anisotropy. Positive values here squeeze the bouquet and negative values stretch it. I will increase the number of blades and remove the rotation. Finally, I will make the bouquet appear bigger by lowering the F number again. At this point, I'm happy with the results and I'm ready to start adjusting the lens effects, which simulate lens artifacts that happen with real cameras. Let's first expand the right VFB panel. Before I start adjusting the settings, I will enable the denoising so I can see the denoised result. Just like denoising, the lens effects are post-effect, applied after the rendering has started or after the render end. This grayed out eye icon indicates that the lens effects are not enabled. To enable it, simply scroll down and click on Enable Bloom and Glare. To make the effect stronger, move the intensity slider to the right. The size slider makes the effect bigger and more apparent. We can also use the settings to adjust the aperture shape and add dust and scratches to the simulated lens. Enabling the lens scratches gives us options to adjust the number of streaks, their density, length, and so on. We can also switch to another pattern, which will result in a completely different glare appearance. We can also add dust to the lens, and there are different settings and patterns to choose from. These are pretty self-explanatory, and the best way to get a feel for what they do is to play around with the settings. If you scroll down, you will find an aperture preview to see what aperture is creating this result. Finally, I will adjust the intensity and start production rendering directly from the frame buffer. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. By now, you should have learned enough to be able to create your own cameras and adjust their settings to get the desired result. Make sure to take a look at the rest of the videos from our Getting Started series or check our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon.